Afternoon, Gary. Hi, Mark. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Six games unbeaten. If someone had said to you before the Wolves game that that would be what would happen, what would you have said to them? No chance. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't happen often in the Premier League. So, um, yeah, it's been, it's been a good run for us, of course. Um, the, the, uh, the sort of perfectionist in me wishes we'd won a few more of them. Um, but yeah, we're, um, we're, we've been on a good run. I mean, it doesn't mean anything going into the next one, but we have we, we have been on a on a good run. The only unbeaten side since that Liverpool nine 0 defeat in the Premier League. Quite remarkable when you look at the the teams that are, you're competing against. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, it's hard to hard to draw too many comparisons. Obviously, other teams have had played different opposition and and things that will that will lead into that stat. Um, if I focus purely on us um, and what I've said to you from the start is the boys need to uh, give a certain level of performance in every moment of every game um, and all six games in, in every minute of it. I believe they've, they've given that. They've been fully focused. They've been fully committed. Um, they've, given, they've given everything at every moment and then results can be defined by real small margins, decisions, things that can go against you. But... If you perform in a certain way and apply yourself in a certain way for all of it, you give yourself a, a real good chance of being competitive, and, uh, and that's what pleases me most about the six games. Really, just that we've been, we've been, really competitive in every every moment of them. I'm not going to ask you whether you want to become the new Bournemouth manager, but would it be fair to say over the course of the last five or six weeks that you have been approached by a number of other clubs looking for a manager about their vacancy? No. That wouldn't be fair. I um I've been fully focused on the Bournemouth job. I've had no no contact, no nothing from anywhere else. I've been mean, spent every moment focused on the team, making sure we're ready for for the next game. Um so yeah, no, there's there's been no interest or I've not been interested to look anywhere else. So your agent's not had any calls from championship clubs or anyone at all that wants to, to look to take you because of the work you're currently doing here? No, I think my the, the the way I work is when I'm at somewhere I'm I'm at somewhere and I, I've been at Bournemouth for 18 months um, and I've been fully focused on Bournemouth since the moment I walked in the door um, and that that hasn't changed for a single second in the last last six weeks. Ralph Hasenhutl was speaking this morning to the media. He said you've done an absolutely incredible job since becoming the Bournemouth manager and, and he knows the rigours of the Premier League. He was the manager of Southampton when they were beaten nine 0 on two occasions. Um, when you're getting praise from someone who understands just how difficult this job is, what does that say about the work that you and your team are doing and the players? Um, I'm really proud of what the players have produced. Really proud because they were in a. It, it was obviously a tough moment, um, as as you say. Ra Ralph has been through that with his players as well. Um, so yeah, to to come back from the from the nine nil and respond how they have, I'm really really proud of them. Um, that that doesn't change the fact that we need to keep going and we've we've achieved we've we've achieved nothing yet. So Wednesday night is is massive again for us. Um, so yeah, just we've we've done we've done a good job so far as a group players. Um, but the, the next one is always massive. It can change so quickly. Is it fair to say, as an ex Pompey man, that this game back then always meant something for the Portsmouth fans? For you to go in against Southampton in a different role and a different club, but you know, does that kind of history still stick with you? I have fond memories of the fixture, um, playing in it. I mean, but um, yeah, that, that doesn't change my approach to this one. I think my, my link to Portsmouth as a player um, doesn't affect how I feel about playing Southampton for, for Bournemouth. Um, my, my thoughts around playing Southampton with Bournemouth is we need to put more points on the board. It's, it's a home game um, under the lights. We're going to have big support again that we, we, we need to go and we need to go and put in a performance and give ourselves a real chance of adding, adding to our tally. When you've done your analysis of Southampton, are you surprised at perhaps their lack of points on the board recently, particularly with the players that they've got there? What have you made of their, their strengths and weaknesses? Yeah, so, so, so fine margins again. They've been in a lot of games that, that haven't gone their way. Um, Obviously, they, they probably haven't got as many points as they would have liked so far, but they, yeah, they carry a real threat. Um, aggressive team, play forward a lot. Um, che Adams is a big threat for them. Powerful runner, physical. Um, yeah, yeah, well coached, organised. 
expecting a expecting a difficult game as as all, all 38 of the Premier League ones will be. And just finally for me, we've been talking to managers over the course of this week about their behaviour on the sideline. We saw Jurgen Klopp get sent off at the weekend and we've seen other managers, um, you know, Roberto Deserving, Thomas Frank had a scuffle on, on Friday night. How hard is it to keep your emotions in check when you're in the heat of the battle and when you're managing matches and, and every point, every kick, every moment in a match can be so crucial to defining the outcome of the game and perhaps even your job? Yeah, I think it it's there's there's a lot of pressure. Um there's not a lot of time to control yourself after certain moments on 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 the field. So I think it's everyone I mean I'm always trying to stay aware of how how you behave and as, as in everyday life really, you always want to behave in the right way and you want to set a good example. Um and that that is always and I'm sure that's always at the the front of of all managers minds. Um but as you see, sometimes things happen that um, you maybe regret a few moments later. But yeah, everyone's human. I'm sure everyone's everyone's always doing their best to make sure that we're, we're behaving in, in an appropriate way. Um, but as you say, there there is there is big pressure out there, and occasionally it does get heated. Thank you, Elvis. Gary, I was sat very close to you in the Fulham game. You're quite a fidget on the touchline. I remember your comments on the after the first game. I wondered. If it's getting easier, more natural to you to to be in that position in the in in the front of the technical area. I, I like standing there. I like it. I I like being I like being at the front. I like feeling like I can try and help the boys in in moments. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know whether I fidget. I guess I walk up and down, and I, I get through a lot of water. Um, but yeah, it's just yeah. I, I mean, I enjoy standing there. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't know what. I haven't really watched myself, so I don't really know. But yeah, I am enjoying it. And one of your predecessors who sat in that chair chucked away some expensive trainers after he wore them at three straight games and lost all three games. Given your luck with penalty decisions since you've been sat in that chair, are you superstitious going to change anything? Uh, no, I'm not superstitious. Um, hopefully a few more decisions start to go our way. I think they've been... Yeah, I think we've been unfortunate on some of them. Um, so hopefully, we, yeah, they start they start to balance out a little bit. But yeah, I, I have no real focus around that. I mean, we discuss it after the game and I speak to the officials about it if I feel I need to. And then I'm asked about it by you guys, of course. But then um, a, apart from that, I mean, I never speak to our, our players around it or it's always like, what can we control? What, what, what did we do? What do we need to do next time? Um, so yeah. No, no real superstition, and I haven't thrown any trainers away. <laughs> um, how how is the squad after Fulham? Any significant bumps and bruises and things? No, we're good. We're good, same as we were. You had Junior Stanislas back on the bench after he's had a, a rough time. How good is that to have him as an option uh, coming back in? Yes, it's brilliant. Um, him, Joe Ruffwell, um, Ben Pearson's back around it. Um, they'll all give us. Yeah, they all bring certain strengths that we're definitely going to need. Um, so Junior all brings us some real quality that I'm, I'm sure we'll need in moments and delighted to have a player of his, of his quality back. We haven't seen Joe in the Premier League yet. What can we expect to see from him when he does make his debut? Uh, he's, he's a good footballer, powerful boy. Um, has real good sort of acceleration and drive, can burst away from people. Um, yeah, he's, he's a good footballer, really nice on the ball. So um, yeah, I'm sure he'll, he'll have some really important moments for us this season. And just one more on Southampton, the way you've analysed their last few games. They've they've completely transformed their squad over the summer. So lots of new young players coming in. I wondered, as well as the threats you've spotted and things, in them, have you noticed any great sign of progress in the last few weeks with them as, as the manager gets his ideas into these young players? Are you seeing them develop and get more dangerous as the weeks go on? Um, yeah, I think he, he, has a, he has a quite defined style um as as a coach um and they they're, they're generally very front foot and aggressive and um yeah that that that's sort of always how I've seen seen his teams they like they look to press they look to put good pressure on you um yeah when you when you change a lot of players in the summer and especially when you sign some young ones sometimes you you need a little while to for for things to come into place um and I I'm sure that I'm sure that Ralph will turn it around he's had a he's had a real good track record so 
um, yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a very very tough game for us. Thanks, Gary. Afternoon, Gary. Hi. Gary spoke about Ben Pearson, Joe Rothwell Jr. Stanislas is a tough team to get into at the moment. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, I mean, it means that the boys that are out there are doing really well. Um, but yeah, we're gonna. I mean, I've, I spoke to, spoke to you guys around it a lot, and I don't really see it as starters and non-starters. I just look at all of them as as in they're, they're just re- going to be really important. Um, and I need them all. I need them all to be ready at all times because you just never know what the situation's going to call for. Um, so yeah, it's just yeah, really good that we've got a few of them back and. Um, I have a few decisions to make now when I'm naming the bench and things like that. Whereas when I'm picking the starting eleven, um, whereas a few a few weeks ago the bench was basically everyone that was was basically everyone that was fit. So it's nice to get a few back. Have you asked Jack Stevens for a scouting report on Southampton, or would that be unfair on him? Mm, no, uh, yeah, no, that would be unfair on him. No, I haven't. Uh, I'd, I'd do my I'd do my own research on on Southampton. Um, so no, I wouldn't put I wouldn't put Jack in that in that situation. Just on that same subject, Bournemouth Southampton's not the only game taking place tomorrow night. The un, the development squad are playing Luton away. Would would that fixture be an opportunity maybe for Jack to play and maybe some other players? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure who's going to be going to that and who's going to be with us at this moment. So um, yeah, once we've decided what our our squad looks like, then we can then we can make decisions around the, as you say, the other game that's that's going on up at, at Luton. Now, so we all know that Southampton and Portsmouth are the, are the the main rivals there. Bournemouth, because of where we are, see Southampton as a rival. We certainly see this this as a derby. Gary, you played in three Southampton Pompey derbies. You played in uh, Norwich Ipswich derby, a Borough Sunderland derby. You said it doesn't change your approach as a manager. What about as a player? Does it change a player's approach? Yeah, I used to. I used to try and use every little bit I could for extra motivation to make sure I was ready for for games. Try mm. and find a, an edge over over the opposition if if I could. Um, so yeah, that that was how I used to get ready as a player. I would always try and find extra motivation, whether it be playing against a side that you've played for, whether it be playing against your local rivals. I was always trying to find an edge. Um, I'm sure the lads have their, their own way of making sure they're ready. Um, but yeah, slightly different as a coach. I mean, you un- you understand that this one, as you rightly say, is, is important to the fans. Um, but yeah, ev- every game this season is is important to, to me and the club. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll be preparing for this exactly the same as we prepare for the others. But I am, I am excited about it under the lights. Local rivals coming down, so it'll be a, be a good game.